Welcome back to the Significant Leader Summit. It is day four of the summit, if you can believe it. This week has been action-packed and so much fun. I am your host, Kaylee O'Keefe, the founder of Soul Excellence Publishing, and I am so honored to be joined to kick us off on day four by Maria Larson, Executive Vice President, Organization and Strategy, joining us from Denmark. Maria, welcome to the stage. Thank you, Kaylee. I'm so happy that you're here. And I want to, before we dig into what is significant, you know, what does significance mean to you and your journey? One thing that was so special about our book launch was that it also coincided with a special day in Denmark. Can you paint a picture for us of book launch and what it was like for you? Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. I was I was uh, walking around in Copenhagen and we had flags all over since it was the birthday of the Queen of Denmark. So uh, I had to share that with all of you, right? That the Queen was celebrating our book launch uh, as well. Yeah, that was amazing. Oh, just like the pictures were so beautiful. Like we all felt like it was truly for us to and launching this book and joining the ranks of saying, yes, we are significant. We are queen sitting on the throne. Um, exactly. And it's like, it really, uh, you really brought that to life for us. It was so fun. <laughs> yeah, that was, a, that was a good, that was a good start, right? So such a good start. And so here we are a few weeks later, you've written your story, you've put it out into the world. Let's dig in. You know, you yeah. just write so beautifully from the heart about your career, about your life, about your influences. And I love for you to take us back to your childhood because yeah. it had such a strong impact on you and how you now view the world as an executive. So tell us more about that. Yeah, so I, I begin my chapter by actually telling about my parents uh, and how I was raised. Um, so my mom was a teacher and my dad was a CEO of a company. And uh, what I took uh, from, from, from them raising me was like this caring and taking care of other people viewing people for who they are, uh, their differences. Uh, and and I, I use the expression, the human lens. So mm -hmm. I, I, I talk a lot in my chapter about how I view the world with a human lens. And that's something they taught me to, to you know, see different people. It could be the children in school or the employees at, at, uh, in the company. But see, they, they came with different backgrounds, uh, might be from different countries, might be with, you know, very different families. And to know that when you look at other people, that we're not the same, we're not brought up the same way, we're maybe not brought up in the same country with the same values, the same beliefs and so forth. I, I find that very valuable to always take that with me. Uh, and that's something they raised me with. Uh, Maybe not explicit, but uh, but I I learned from them, and and one of the things I'm also writing about is like you understand afterwards. Uh, you don't understand when you're in it, but afterwards you see, oh, that was actually that was what they did. Uh, that was uh, the way they behaved. That was what they were trying to teach me as well. Hmm. I love just uh, you mentioned in the chapter of how they they held really high standards, but they didn't just put out those standards and be like, all right, good luck, you're on your own, but no. you know, really help to coach and guide and support yeah. each individual from where they were at. And I just, that really resonated with me when I, I heard that message of like, yes, that's what it's about. It's like, hold the bar high. Hmm. But then as a leader, how do you support? How do you guide? Exactly. And, and you cannot lead uh, different people the same way. So you have to actually look at who, who is it in front of me? Who am I talking to? Who am, who am I trying to coach? And, and how do I then do that? Because, you know, you lead differently with, with different people. It, 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 it sounds very, it's, it's actually, it sounds so, yeah, of course, but it's, it's not that easy because you, you, you have your own standards, but you have to think about who's in front of me and how do I approach uh, him or her? And, uh, and and what would be the best way uh, to to uh, to work with that? Uh, and I think I'm taking that a lot with me uh, when I'm you know when I became a leader. Who is it in front of me? Uh, and uh, and what do they need? So I know what I need, but how, what do they need to to kind of help me? Uh, I know my own shortcomings. I'm, I'm very aware of that. <laughs> uh, but but I'm also very good at looking at who who is it in front of me and uh, what are they their capabilities and, and how do we make that shine? Um, and I think that's important. 
for for every leader to to kind of dig into that. You mentioned being a leader and you write about in your chapter of becoming an executive vice president at age 33 at one of Denmark's <laughs> largest companies. Tell us about how you felt during that moment and what it was like to kind of ascend to a position as a woman at a young age. How did everything that you learned help you <laughs> in <Yeah>. that moment? <laughs> So I have this uh, saying that I'm also, you know, I write it a couple of times in my book. I jump on a train. <laughs> uh, I did that with the book here. So when I saw that, we, that you, you, were, you were doing a new book, I was like, I'm jumping on that train too. But that's actually also what I've been doing my whole career. So when I was asked to, to be an executive vice president at that time, was I ready? I don't know if I was, but uh, I knew that I had to take that chance. And that's my expression when I say, you know, jump on the train is like, try. Uh, I'm, I'm quoting one of my friends who also said to me, like, try, it's not sure you will fail. <laughs> and I find that very, uh, very funny, but it, but it's, that's, I think that's the way I'm, I'm doing it. I've never done that. P.B. Longstocking, my childhood hero, always said, I've never done that before. I'm sure I can do it. And it's a bit of that. So, so of course, I knew that the executive board, they knew what I was capable of. Otherwise, they wouldn't have asked me. But at the same time, you, you know, you have that feeling, am I, am I really ready for this? But you don't know until you tried it. So, um, so that was my approach. And then, of course, like I said, I'm, I'm aware of my shortcomings. And that's why, for me, it was important to set the right team of people around me mm -hmm. to make sure that, you know, I might not be uh, an expert in that or this area, whatever, but but I know how to lead. I know how to, you know, I trust my intuition, uh, my gut feeling, and and I'm uh, I'm very well aware of, uh, you know, how to navigate. And, and that has really helped me uh, along the way to navigate in, in corporate politics or in, in, you know, what would be the right solution in this moment. So, so yeah. And, um, I just think of like, ooh, what would the world be like if the Pippi Longstocking quote was the one that was playing in our minds versus I've never done that before. Ugh, I'm probably not <laughs> great at it or it's scary. Yeah. Or I don't know. I mean, just the, the things that we would say yes to and be open to and show up for if that was the mantra that yeah yeah oh she's definitely my hero still <laughs> she was a strong strong little woman on her own you know and uh, and she also said like if you're extraordinary strong you have to be extra kind and and i think that's a good Ooh. that's a good thing to to remember when you're a leader too be, because you you have power and you you can you know, it's on you. So, so you have to be kind to the people around you. And make sure that you you lead them the right way, and 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 not use your power in the wrong way. And I find that very important to to remember that always. I love it. Let me. Um, I want to touch on something that you just brought up: um, corporate politics, because I think it's something that, especially conscious leaders who are self aware, who you know want to 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 bring about change in the world. They they shy away from corporate politics. It seems icky. It seems like I don't I don't want to play that game, you know. But but you have to. Like politics is just relationships and understanding what do people value. So yeah. what have you learned or what guidance do you have for those that are kind of on the fence of like, I want to continue to rise in my career, but I don't want to play the politics. Yeah. What would you say to them. Yeah, well, I think I will, I will go back to the human lens uh, because that, would, that actually helps me a lot to, to know that when I'm in front of many different opinions and, you know, people want to do, you know, they want to, they want to, you know, get, they want to get the budget for their area, whatever it might be, you know, yeah. and then you, you have to think about why, why is he reacting that way and how can we come to the best possible solution because it's always you know a zone of best possible agreement when you when you when you're in that game and i think to think about it and then say okay you want this i want that how do we how do we actually you know work together instead of you know clashing and and uh, colliding and, and so forth so 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 always think about the other part and why they are saying behaving uh, that way and then try to figure out how do we how do we then meet each other 
Mm. And that's what I've been doing all the time. So I'm, I'm always trying to be one step ahead, of course, and, and, <laughs> and what's happening and what will what will he say or hers? What would she say uh, uh, if I come up with this solution? But I think that's what's helped me uh, along the way, the human lens. Um, yeah. I, I think it's so powerful because I think if you can approach the corporate politics without being so attached to your own desired outcome, and fall in love a bit more with the process and using yeah. that human lens to understand, okay, what are the options? What are the motivations? How are we seeking these win for all solutions? It's delicate, it takes time, but it's so worth it. And there's actually a lot of fun to be had there versus just putting out, this is what I want. Oh, okay, yeah. it's not compatible with what you want. <laughs> so now we're gonna fight about it. Definitely. You know, I, I studied politics uh, originally. I, I, I'm not from, uh, you know, I didn't go to a business school before late in my career, uh, but I studied politics and we were discussing politics always at home. Uh, and I think that gave me always, you know, the two opposites and how do you then uh, try to, to find the best solution and, and yeah, maybe that's also something I'm using without thinking too much about it. But uh, yeah, I might be. And when you see the two poles and then you can kind of fight, figure out, okay, we, we cannot stay out here. We have to meet each other somehow. And then, yeah, that's what I've been doing all my life. What are some of the other lessons that you shared in the book or that you really want our listeners and other leaders to, to take away from reading your chapter? Yeah, I think what you asked me before also about like, how was it to become EVP at the age of 33? I think trust yourself, trust your intuition, uh, know that you have uh, your own, you know, integrity, authenticity, you have your values and you have just have to build on that and believe in yourself. Because if you don't believe in yourself, nobody will follow you. And I think that's an important thing to remember always that if you're saying, I'm not sure I can do that uh, and I'm not sure what I'm what I am or OK, someone asked me, you know, they 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 appointed me. So I have to trust myself. Uh, and I do so in every you know it's 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 again the jump on the train but it's also about trust trusting uh, your own uh, gut feeling and and uh, if you know you can do it then just go out there and do it and and I think I've, that's what I've learned also from all the talks about politics and at home and in my studies and also the corporate politics that you you know you have to fight for what you believe in you have to stand up and make sure that you're like uh, but you always have to do it decently. Um, and that means a lot to me. I was raised really to, to look at the world and not only go for what I wanted, but you know, go for what you want, but do it in a decent manner. And don't you know, step on anyone on your way. And that's important to me that I, I treat people decently. Um, and that's what I'm also trying to, to say when we're, when, when you're in a fight with, you know, it might be sometimes in, in corporate life that you're, <laughs> you're in like, and you don't agree, but you know, you can say it in a decent way. And that's important for me. Can I ask you about um, this, this human lens within corporate and your focus on organization and strategy? I get the sense right now that people are paying a lot of kind of attention, but I would say lip service to this notion how have you kind of throughout your career galvanized people around this idea or kind of shifted from like everyone in the boardroom saying like, yeah, we care about this to actually translating it into the way the company runs? I think you know, we, we talk a lot about having IQ and EQ <laughs> uh, and the human lens is the EQ. I think it's, it's the, you know, I, I, I always try to have people on my team, the specialists or the, you know, very intelligent people, but I want people who are also emotionally intelligent. Uh, so they they have a, a, their human lens too, right? They they uh, they understand also why we behave as we do, and they 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 get it. So so I'm I'm really trying to to set a team of diverse people, uh, of course, with their specialist knowledge, but also people who might not be the same. I don't want redundancy of thought, but I want people who you know, have the right, yeah, culture, let's call it that, uh, emotional, intelligent people. And I think when you start uh, always saying that in the team and when you're, when you're assessing people, 
you need to to focus on both. It's not enough to be a specialist. Uh, you have to have a team where you have the diverse uh, mm -hmm. the team members. Um, I love it so much. And I feel like it's it's something, you know, early on in our careers that's not paid enough attention to. And then there's at some point when you're rising in the ranks where it really hits you that like this was the skill and the muscle that you really mm -hmm. needed to be building all along that no one told you about. <laughs> you're like, yeah, oh, but we, okay. we're not we're not always, you know, we it's not you don't you don't get paid because you're emotional intelligent, but you have yeah. to incorporate that somehow, right? So uh, yeah. And and I figured out along the way that actually some of my colleagues they used they used my lens, <laughs> so they would ask me sometimes to, could you maybe uh, participate in this meeting? And then what happens? You know, you need someone who who also you know get the get the vibes of the meeting maybe. And 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 if you're if you're negotiating or you're you're in discussions or you're you know building strategy, you, you need someone also to be able to see what's actually, what's going on, uh, what's going on in the room. And, uh, and I think that's important to, to also value that. Mm. Yeah, being able to read the energy of the room, the vibe of the room, like what, therefore, what is the starting place for this conversation is yeah. so, so powerful, um, often overlooked. But if you have that superpower that it seems you have, like, oh, it's so, oh, so valuable. <laughs> My PP power, maybe, yeah. <laughs> Maria, why was why was it important for you to tell your story at this moment in your life and career in the book Significant Women? Yeah, so uh, I already said that I kind of jumped on the train when I saw this book was coming <laughs> up, right? So, but I had a friend who was in your previous book, uh, leading through the pandemic supported him and I thought this is really cool I want to I want to participate as well and I have I think I, I told you at the beginning I had you know I have a story I want to tell uh, and if that can help other people younger people maybe or people my age to believe in themselves and jump on the train and dare and do and so forth and and also know that you don't understand everything while it's going on you actually only understand afterwards then it's fine and sometimes you need the what I liked really about this book was it, it's it's a book where we are allowed to be vulnerable as well. So it's not about only telling or you know I was I have I have a superpower or I was an EVP. <laughs> to me that was it was more the journey uh, yeah. towards that that was important for me. Um, and I think we need to be able to to you know be vulnerable together and 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 help each other. That's a part of yeah who I am as well. So, so that was important for me. And then, of course, it was it was also different. You you learn a lot when you start when you sit down and you start writing your story. You actually learn about yourself too, and you put words to yeah. what you might already know. Uh, know, but it's uh, yeah, it helps you clarify somehow. It, it's uh, so true. You, you guided us quite well through that. So, uh, so thank you for that. <laughs> You're so welcome. And I I really agree of the getting it out of our mind onto the paper. And just like it's our own wisdom being reflected back to us of like, oh, right. And then to, to print it out, like I think of your final lessons that you write in your chapter to print it out, to put it on the wall and be a mm -hmm. reminder of like, wait, like this is this has been guiding me and how do I continue to move yeah. in that direction? Yeah. And I, we, I, I, you know, there, there was uh, this book about, you know, how do you want to measure your life? Right. Mm -hmm. And then, and I, I've, I've always taken that question with me. So, so this is part where I'm, I'm kind of measuring at the moment. I, am I where I want to be? Right. So in many aspects, it could be, you know, professionally or private. And you always have to think about that. And how, who, who do I want to be like, mm -hmm. uh, and who do I want to, become maybe also but <laughs> but when when uh, because we we that you like I write it, the journey is is never done right you, you you're only when you're gone it's done <laughs> and I think it's an important lesson to know that yeah you're still on the you're still on that train uh, sometimes, <laughs> right? so when we so we started the book launch with you know the queen's celebration and you put your story out there what's happened since feedback that you've received or what's been the response to people kind of seeing you in a slightly different light? Yeah, I think it's, it's always so important to, uh, to remember that it's the receiver of the message who actually interprets, right? 
Uh, and I, I write that also in my book. And I think, so one of my friends, I asked him to read the chapter actually before publishing. And what he did was he, he highlighted in different ways. So he highlighted with, I don't remember if it was green, if he learned something from me, and with purple, if it uh, gave him emotions. And I found that so valuable because, you know, then you actually see, am I writing it? And it, it, the intention, is it getting through? Uh, so I actually loved the way he was uh, giving me feedback on this. And I and it was it was the right places and it was the intention <laughs> and I was so happy about that. But anyway, um, I've 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 gotten a, really a lot of uh, good feedback. Uh, some people said I could have told you that that was you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did, did did you have to write a book to to know that? And I know I didn't, but uh, I think uh, people say it's it's very um, um, honest. And I think that's what we all in this book are trying to at least to be as honest as possible, be vulnerable and help each other. Uh, and that's the feedback I get uh, as well, that it's, it's, it's helping. It's nice to see that it's not just corporate Maria, but it's, it's Maria like personal uh, uh, sharing some of the uh, ups and downs in my life. And I think that's received very well. Mm. I'm so happy to hear that. And I totally wrote down this, um, tactic of the the different colors of highlighter yeah. like yeah our next book we're gonna that'll be yeah, some guidance, you know? my friend. Yeah. <laughs> so all credit to him or her but like yes i'm like ooh, that's a good idea for the next one of like how to tap your friends for feedback in the mm -hmm. most useful way possible because yeah. most people read it and they're like yeah that was great and you're like okay what well, like i need something more <laughs> i always say steal with pride right so when it's a good idea you should uh, just give him credit right yeah <laughs> so yeah i've used i've actually used that afterwards when i was reading some of the chapters i said I, i'm gonna i'm gonna use that method that's amazing it's a good one. <laughs> maria what's what's next for you kind of coming out of sharing this story uh looking ahead to your future what do you desire next for your life or career Oh, that's a big question. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, at the moment, I'm in, I'm in, uh, in, uh, I'm an executive consultant. You know, a partner uh, in a consultancy company, and I did that. That was a jumping on the train too, after being EVP. Uh, and uh, you know, you never know what's uh, on the next train. But uh, <laughs> at the moment, this is what I'm, uh, this is what I'm doing. But, uh, you know, the train uh, has to always move on, right? <laughs> so yeah, I think there are a lot of uh, interesting possibilities out there. And I think it's, uh, it's important just to dare when they, the possibilities come along the way. And now that you have your story out there, you really put out a philosophy, like your philosophy for leadership. I'm just so excited for you and what you'll continue to attract and the trains that you'll jump on and the places that you'll go and it's just been such a pleasure getting to to know you corporate maria and more personal maria throughout this process it's been very special yeah it's it's, it's been really nice to to participate in this and uh, i think it's you know when you ask what's the next you know I, wh whether it was in corporate or now uh, from the outside i think the the lessons are the same uh, like and you you I cannot detach who I am in private, uh, professionally, and so, and and you know, the other way around. So it's important for me just to be Maria uh, whenever <laughs> I approach something, right? So, yeah. Oh, Maria, thank you so much for sharing your story in the book Significant Women for joining us in the summit today. This has been so fun. Thank you. Thank you, Kaylee. You are welcome. And thank you to all of our attendees watching live and on the replay. Let us know, hashtag replay, if you're watching our interview afterward. So happy that you're here. And don't forget our next multi-author leadership book, The X Factor, The Spiritual Secrets Behind Successful Executives and Entrepreneurs, uh, will be coming out in September and you're invited to apply. Maria, thanks again so much. And thank you all thank you. for joining us today.